in Ethiopia? Well, you know, it's a very serious situation, Trey, and it's one that I've been talking to people in different parts um, of the energy business and in intelligence areas and uh, specialists in Africa, and it's not just um, what's happening in Ethiopia. It's what's happening at the core of all of this is uh, are the energy prices and what is happening to the price of um, diesel and also natural gas and fuel all over the world. And this is, um, I mean, really exacerbated by the conditions that were set in motion with the response to COVID, um, you know, where you, you basically had situ a, a country like Ethiopia that has, um, has struggled for a very long time with this internal conflict. It has, made, you know, a large number, of very devout Christian population. And, um, and it has also this conflict with um, the, is the Muslim population. But what is really exacerbating this is the fact that the world is in disarray. Um, you know, we are so focused internally on what is happening in America. We're not covering the lockdown protests all over the world. We're not covering the collapse of world economies. We're not covering what is essentially, you know, energy suicide by many um, countries that is being imposed on countries like Ethiopia. And so what you have here are the perfect conditions for an age-old conflict to resurface. And um, of course, it's always the civilians who are caught in the middle who are paying the highest price. And not that far away in another part of Africa, Ghana um, is experiencing massive famine, massive food shortages, because farmers all over the world are struggling to get fertilizer. And that's because of the price of natural gas, the restrictions imposed by Russia and China, two of the biggest suppliers of fertilizer worldwide. And, uh, and in Ethiopia, of course, that is also exacerbating these tensions. So it's a very serious situation because in the middle of all of this, you know, the real moral uh, authority of the world, the United States of America, has now said to everybody, we don't really believe in freedom. We don't really stand for anything because look in Afghanistan. We just slit the throats of our allies and left them to die. So no one is looking now to the United States with the same amount of respect and, um, and also, you know, a little bit of fear, right? That's gone. Because what countries are seeing is that this is a moment of opportunity for them to exploit. And uh, it's not just tensions in Ethiopia. There's tensions with Taiwan, and there's tensions in um, all over the globe. Israel is in a very, very serious situation that we're not even talking about. You know, they're going door to door in Israel, getting them to hunker down and really prepare their bunkers and, uh, and putting the country on edge and, you know, and getting set not for another two-week conflict with Hezbollah, but a real conflict, a real ongoing serious conflict, you know, that, that is uh, regarded by Israelis and certainly the Israeli intelligence services, according to a number of intelligence people I've spoken to, as a real existential threat. Laura, you've touched on a number of hot spots. I just want to pick one more. we got about two minutes. Afghanistan, the continuing humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. What do our viewers need to know? They need to know that the solution to the humanitarian crisis is not to hand over money and food and aid to the Taliban. You cannot legitimize terrorists or fear as a form of governing. And the Afghans don't want that. They know that everything you give to the Taliban will not make its way to them. They will not be the beneficiaries. You will do nothing to move the needle on hunger and uh, malnutrition and the desperate, desperate conditions as they are now in the throes of winter in Afghanistan, just in the beginning of it, and it's, it's about to get worse. So that is one thing Afghans want you to know. The other thing from every Afghan I speak to, and you know it's a constant thing for me every day, is that while your lives may have moved on, and while your leaders, America, this administration, they may want you to forget about Afghanistan. They may want you to think it's behind us. It is not behind them. Every single day, more Afghans are killed. And these are people, I want people to imagine, imagine if you built your own business, right? And it was really risky. And you ask people to come in and give you blood. Some of them sacrifice their children. Some of them sacrifice their own lives. Some of them, their brothers and sisters. And then when you wanted to sell your company, you were done. What did you do? You basically, handed a death sentence to uh, on, put on the head of everyone who ever worked for you and you gave it to the people who bought that company and then you walked away as if it had nothing to do with you and it wasn't your fault and then you painted them 
told everyone in the world that they were a bunch of cowards. They never did anything much for you anyway, and they were corrupt. And that's the situation that we've created, and, it, and we really cannot forget. We have to do something about it. And, and the last thing I'll say, I know you got to go, is don't forget that the women in Afghanistan have lost all rights and all hope. Their homes are prisons, and we did that, so we need to fix it. Laura Logan travels the world so you and I don't have to and brings us stories like this. And you can watch Laura Logan on Laura Logan Has No Agenda on Fox Nation. Laura, thank you very much.